Apparently, I'm not in a dream. See, if I would be in a dream, this index finger would most probably go through the palm of my hand. And this is just one of the many reality checks I'll be doing multiple times a day for the following weeks. Because I want to learn how to lucid dream. And here's how I did it. First of all, a lucid dream is a dream during which the dreamer is aware of the fact that he or she is dreaming and therefore often can consciously influence the dream content. And most interestingly, it has been demonstrated that lucid dreaming is a learnable skill. Apparently there are a plethora of ways to induce lucid dreams, but I actually only needed a handful of them. First, I made sure to get more quality sleep. I had a boundary at 8pm after which I had to stop working. However, I didn't always stick to this boundary. Then I drank some chamomile tea and did some stretching to relax. After that I opened our bedroom window to lower the temperature of the room. I used double curtains to block out most of the sunlight and I even bought an eye mask but it felt quite irritating so I stopped using it. Often our neighbors can get quite noisy so I also started using earplugs to block the noise. Now I found that as my sleep quality improved it was easier to recall my dreams. So it's uh, day eight of this experiment and for the first time I actually could remember multiple scenes with quite vivid detail. Previously I've just remembered like one scene without that much detail. And the opposite was also true. When my sleep quality decreased it was harder for me to recall my dreams. Six and a half hours of sleep and I can't recall my dreams at all. I also started dream journaling. Right after waking up, I tried to write down my dreams as fast as possible. In the beginning, I was writing by hand, but I found that it was so slow that I often forgot parts of my dream before I could write them down, so instead I started writing down my dreams in digital format. It was also easier to analyze my dream journal in a digital format, as I could search for specific words, names and locations. I'm not really sure how useful dream journaling was in the end, but in general it can help you spot dream signs, in other words, themes themes, objects or people that repeatedly appear in your dreams. And when you know your dream signs, it can be easier to spot them when you're dreaming and to become lucid. Now, there are many techniques for making lucid dreams more probable. One of those techniques is called mild or mnemonic induction of lucid dreams, which requires you to rehearse a dream before falling asleep and visualize becoming lucid while focusing on the intention to remember that one is dreaming. And yeah, that sounds quite complicated, but uh, I didn't use this technique quite as described, but nevertheless, every morning I spent five minutes visualizing myself in a scene I had often written about in my dream dream journal. I actually wanted to fly in my dream, so I also visualized myself flying around the sea. I mean, I, I even watched videos of POV flying. Another technique for inducing lucid dreams is reality testing or reality checks. Basically, reality check is an action that would be impossible or just plain weird in a dream. For instance, if you try to push your finger through the palm of your hand in a dream, it will go through your palm. In fact, just trying to look at your hands can be weird. If you check the clock twice in a dream, the time will most probably change, or you might not even be able to read the time. And if you grab your nose in a dream, you're still able to breathe. Knowing this, I set my phone to remind me every two hours from 8am to 8pm to do a reality check. Time for a reality check! It was a simple routine that took like 5 seconds. First I looked at my hands carefully, then I tried to push my finger through the palm of my hand, and then I looked at the time and blocked my nose and tried to breathe through it. And it didn't matter where I was. Often the reminder went off when I was walking to the gym, so I just stopped on the street to look at my hands. You know, totally understandable and rational behavior. I also tracked my sleep with a Whoop band. Not sponsored. Whoop gives you all kinds of data, but for this video we're mostly interested in the sleep data. I manually exported all the data to a spreadsheet and gave each night of sleep a lucidity score. A score of 1 meant that I could not recall my dream at all, and a score of 5 meant that that I had an actual lucid dream. To be honest, I, I didn't really see that many correlations between the variables, but I did notice a few things. For example, every time I slept under seven hours, I could barely remember my dreams at all. Interestingly, the amount of REM sleep I got didn't really seem to correlate with dream recall or lucidity. On some nights, under 15% of my sleep was REM, but I still recalled my dreams well, and on other nights, I had over 40% of REM, but I could barely remember anything from the dream. Finally, the more consistent my bedtime 
time had been over the past days, the more probable it was for me to remember my dream. And then... Ah, oh, sorry. And then finally, on 3rd December 2021, after going to sleep early and getting a good amount of sleep, I finally got my first lucid dream. I think I, I had a lucid dream. Let me let me wake up and write down this dream. So here's what happened. I think I woke up a bit and then I just tried to fall back to sleep and I tried to picture the environment I had been in the dream before I woke up as vividly as I could and I just imagined myself in the dream and then all of a sudden I just felt it was kind of like this wave come over me and I, at that point I was certain that I was actually in the dream myself. So yeah, the, the way I got my first uh, lucid dream was a bit of a surprise. I didn't plan it to happen that way. I became lucid unintentionally by using dream re-entry. This technique can also be called uh, wake up back to bed or WT... Uh, w B B B technique. Often this technique is used by setting an alarm to wake you up during the REM phase of the sleep, in other words in the middle of the night, and after the alarm has woken you up you try to fall back asleep while maintaining your awareness. And that's pretty much how I got my first lucid dream, minus the alarm. And it was just so vivid, so we, I was in a, in a cabin and the cabin was close to a lake. I could touch things, I could move things, also I kept doing those reality checks, so I just blocked my nose and tried to breathe and I was able to breathe. It felt felt kind of like I still had some air gap in my nostrils, even though I was holding my nose. I tried flying, but I was only able to levitate a bit off the floor. And also, I, I only did that flying thing for, you know, a few seconds, because I was so excited to try all the other stuff. But I quickly realized that I just couldn't manipulate the environment in any way. But I think I've read that it's pretty common that during your first lucid dreams you can't really control the environment, you need to practice it. Then I walked outside of the cabin and looked at the lake. The lake was just so... I don't know, if something can be beautiful in a dream, it certainly was, because it was so vivid. I could see the light bouncing off the water. And then I went back inside and then there was one person, I don't know who it was, but I asked the person... Do you know what time it is in the real world? Because I was a, a bit afraid that I was, or that I had been sleeping a bit too long. And the weird thing was, it was actually getting dark in the dream. I think my brain was just trying to tell me that, yeah, it's time to wake up. So it was getting dark in the dream. And when I finally did wake up, I did it like, I think I did it like consciously. Because I just remember being like, yeah, I need to wake up. And then I just remember waking up. And the time was 6.53 a.m. And I was supposed to wake up at 7 a.m. So, what a weird first experience. It's, hard, it's, it's really hard to express how weird it feels. 